Hello, how's everybody doing? All right, so it's Sunday. Uh, just got to do a bunch of cleaning today around the house. That's all I got to do. So, finished reading my books. Nice little healthy stack of uh, new books that I had got in. Um, so, I'm going to do a vlog of those. That way I can help remember what I'm reading. Because I'm reading so much stuff. Um, appreciate everybody who watched Spy Ticks last night. Um, I love that show. I love hanging out with the dudes um, and dudettes. Hello, Sean. If you have not went and checked out Sean's uh, Batman Hush community tag video is up on his channel. Um, and also go check out Comic Food 2814's channel. His videos up as well. They're in a playlist on my channel. Also, if you just don't even want to go find them, they're right there. Um, let's see, 100 subscriber contest. Um, you got till Halloween. Um, I know a few people told me they're going to make videos. They'll probably trickle in here and there. So yeah, um, that should be about it. I'm up to like almost 130 subscribers now. So I'm probably going to do a live stream to announce, uh, to determine the winner. I'll do one of those spinning wheel things. And um, probably going to give out some prizes in the live stream too for the live chat. Just to make it fair for people who don't, who, you know, don't want to make videos or they don't have content on their channels. You know, if you, if you want a shot or if anybody wants a shot to uh, win some stuff, I'll be giving away something. Um, there's one thing I know I'm giving away. I mean, a few more things. So yeah, the next one is on attention seeking geeks channel and it's six ten. What up Dave? I was just talking about spine text last night. I think I'm Spine SpineTix official now. Like this is like what my second week in a row, and then I know I'll be able to be on next week too. So I might, I might as well just make it official. Okay, so let's go through the books that I read. Um, so I'm a shotgun last week for SpineTix, which was a bad idea because I had a big week last week. I just shotgun. I shotgun. I read like twelve books back to back. Anyway. Three hours. My mind was jello. And I was still reading while I was on Spine Tiggs. Uh, we have Exo Man of War, number six. Uh, I remember this from when I was younger. Picked it up, read it. It's all right. And, you know, I'll give it a few issues to really hang my interest. The artwork's amazing. I love the cover art, but the interior art's amazing, too. Um, it's, it's not bad. Um, I don't know if it's something that I want to keep on my pull, but we'll see. I'll give it a few issues to kind of catch me and hold me, but it wasn't bad. Um, this, I was kind of hoping is, was, was something different. And I seen the cover and I was just like, okay, this ought to be kind of cool. And it just kind of really, it, it was just kind of lackluster. It was really lame. Um, Frontiersman, number one. Um, dude lives in the woods, apparently. Robots are like a big thing. I don't know if they've like taken over and they, they're still humans existing, but they're like overlords over, over the humans or something like that. And he lives out in the woods out in the middle of nowhere. He destroyed a robot, took it back to his house to scrap it. Um, he used to be some kind of activist with a superhero activist team. I don't know where I'm, I'm going to have to give it. I'm going to give a few issues because I always do with everything. But it, it, it's kind of interesting, but it wasn't what I thought. We'll see how it goes. But I, I really wasn't too impressed with the first issue. And that's kind of a kind of need to do that. Really, really do. How did they go over 10? They went 10 hours last night. See, I'm glad I tapped out then. I was I would have been dead. Um 
I would have, uh, yeah, oh, well, man, man. Uh, next is the Onslaught Revelation one shot. I got cover A. Um, <laughs> I hate, I hate Professor X's helmet. That is the stupidest. That is stupidest shit. You want me to take you seriously? And you walk around here like that. Um, it's just a one shot, which is kind of weird because this seems like this is event candidate material. So I don't know if this one shot's leading to an event, but apparently, um, so there is a machine that will resurrect beings. They've been using it on just X Men, but that will resurrect things if they are dead. And Onslaught is trapped inside of Charles's mind. That's why Charles Xavier is like one one of the most powerful mutants, like or one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel universe, because he has another being trapped inside of his head that he has to keep in check at all time while doing everything else that he's already doing. So incredible. Um but yeah, it just seemed like it, it was a build up to an event that's not gonna be an event. So now it kind of makes me disappointed. This has actually seemed pretty cool, like a return of onslaught. Why not? Y'all I mean Marvel's done worse. Scuffer broke. Spider Man's going back to bed. I'll let it go. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it go. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Transformers number 35. I think this is the, yeah, cover A. This is cover A. This seemed pretty cool to me. Final cover A was good enough. Um, so there is a giant two-legged walking station, I guess, I guess you would call it, um, that has the Decepticons. Autobots are at their base. There's some fighting ensuing. Uh, one of one of the Autobots, Decepticons. Somebody got eaten by some rust worm things. Um, it's just fun. It's nostalgia. It's this these two clashing. The artwork's great on Transformers books. Um, has been for a long time. It's it's some, like sleep stuff. I mean. The cover is incredible, but the inside arts, it's really hard to draw robots. People hate drawing robots because you have to show emotion without being able to show any facial features and stuff. Like, and body language, I think, has something to do with it, too. Um, next is Flash 774. I have been loving the Flash book here lately. This is one of... This is one of my favorite DC books. It's up there. It's... Nightwing's really good. Swamp Thing's really good. Flash is really good. Um, this doesn't happen in the book. doesn't even come close, as far as I remember. Um, and I really liked, like I said, I really liked Flash. So I really paid attention when I read through it. I don't think she was ever in danger. I don't even think they used their costumes um, until, like, one little part at the end. I have to look and see. But yeah, this didn't happen in the issue. Um, him and his daughter got into some trouble. She did some stuff that could have potentially put her in danger. But since she's part of the family, she's going to have to superhero eventually. She's going to always be putting herself in dangerous situations. So Barry is actually, he was like gushing about his daughter at the beginning of the book. And then towards the end of the book, he's letting her do stuff that is insanely dangerous. But he has no qualms about it. Like, he's just like, yeah, I need you to run over there and throw, like, do this thing. You have to run across the room, and he has to not see you, or you're, you know, and he's fine with it. So it's kind of a weird yin and yang kind of thing as far as his personality, because at the beginning of the book, you're just like, he's going to be way too overprotective of his kid, and he really was not. Um, it, it, it was kind of a starting out, you're thinking it's going to go one way, and then it just goes the complete opposite way thing. So. As I said, I, you know, really enjoyed Flash. It, it's been one of my favorite DC books. Um, Shazam, three of four, uh, four-part miniseries. What is this? In the Clutches of Neuron. Um, yeah. 
Uh, they're fighting the dude. This guy powers up and they win the fight. And then another villain. Uh, I don't know nothing about Shazam. This is my first Shazam. So this guy's apparently an old villain of Shazam of his and he saved them only to take them to, I don't know. It's, I'm just reading it. I'm reading it. I'm enjoying it. It's not bad. What's up, Rude? How are you? Seen you in the chat all last night. I don't know if you went on after I, I need to watch the end. See what happened after I left. Y'all, it was like 6.15 and I was just like, no. I was about to fall asleep in this chair. And I didn't want to pull a rude on spine ticks. So, all right. Uh, next is the Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunter. One shot, the Boosh one shot. Actually really good. I enjoyed it. The artwork was pretty good. I mean, not bad. Um, the story's really good. I don't know how this is going to end up being a one shot. I mean, it, it really made me want to read more. So I don't know. Uh, there's a continuation of it too. I think in doc, it says the story continues in Dr. Afra. I'm not getting Dr. Afra. Um, I did. No, I'm already, I'm already getting too many books. No, I can't just start branching. Um, there's another one, IG 88. So I guess there's one more. I need to put it on my pull because I didn't know there was going to be one more. And I do want each of the one shots. The Java one was my favorite. Um, I'll probably, they should have made a Boba Fett one by now. I hope so. Oh yeah, Dave. Man, you live in Vegas. You need to get, y'all need to get some bandwidth. I'm telling you, that was, I live in Nowhereville. And yeah, I feel for you, my man. All the people in the desert trying to pull all that power at once, I guess. Next is number four of Betty Page and the Curse of the Banshee. I love this cover. It's a great photo cover. Brings back very nostalgic memories. Um, story's pretty good. Um, they're investigating a banshee in uh, Ireland. They go to Ireland. Her and another girl who works for her agency. Um, she is a monster hunter. Betty Page monster hunter. It's great. Artwork is great on the inside. It's very... Um, I don't know what you call it, so I'm just going to show you. Very cartoonish. Very fun. Art by Jethro Morales. Mm, let's see. I think there's a good splash page in here somewhere. Yeah, they run into a librarian in the local town. She's got red shirt written, written all over her. No spoilers, though. Oh, there's like a splash or something in here. What about the ads? Well, I guess I'll just have to show you this. But this is the artwork. And in the 50s, it's really funny because they go into all these situations where they're just faced with overt, like blatant sexism. And Betty Page, either, either A, is so beautiful that men can't even be sexist towards her because they're just looking at how pretty she is, which I, I do know to be as a, as a man, I can say that is a thing. There are women that are so striking. I mean, they, they don't have to be, you know, 
that's, but they're so striking that you just can't even like, you, you just go, whoa. And I mean, that's pretty much it. That's, but so yeah, her, the person who's with her, her partner reacts to it very violently and is like, Hey, how dare you? It always tries to fight everybody. She just like brushes it off. Like she didn't even hear it. Just so aloof about the whole thing. But at the same time, when it comes down to need to kick butt and stuff like that, she's right there in the thick of it. It's really fun book. I'm enjoying it. Artwork's great. Story's hilarious. Um, it's also a whole bunch of nostalgia. So there you go. Um, G.I. Joe, number 286. This is the B cover. Storm Shadow. That is phenomenal. That was As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, getting that. Getting that 100%. Um, this is a story about Storm Shadow and like how he how he got hit. It, it's like a little backstory, not really of his origin, but like of him while he's in. I'm assuming like Vietnam or Korea or something like that is what it looks like. I, I'm pretty sure it's Vietnam and how he became the legend that he is. It's it's really good. The artwork's incredible in this. I would definitely suggest if you were a fan of G.I. Joe as a kid, picking G.I. Joe up. It's really, really good. Uh, let's see what we got here. Mm, oh, Dave, you're on the Reno outskirts. I love I love your police department. They're hilarious. Oh, you did jump in last night. I figured that was going to happen. As soon as I left, I knew it was going to happen. You're going to drink McDonald's. That wouldn't be the weirdest thing that's happened at McDonald's. Oh, wait, you did jump on last night, Root. That's right. You were on. Yeah, that's right. And then I jumped off. That's right, You because you were wearing the mask. All right. Let's see. We got King Spawn number two. I got I, as soon as I saw the McFarland variant, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's throwback to issue five, Billy Kincaid, who makes a return in this book." Um, I'm loving this story. I'm loving the artwork, Javier Fernandez. Oh God! But this is McFarland variant, so this is not Fernandez. But the the artwork inside is incredible. Sean Lewis is doing the writing. Um, yeah, or doing the, uh, John Lewis is doing the art. Let's see. Where's Todd doing this? How are we doing this? Let me take. Ah, oh, and not wait for that to come out. Script plot. Yeah, Sean Lewis. With, with Todd McFarlane, and then Art Javi, Javi, uh, Javi Fernandez, Colors FCO Placencia, I think I said that right, but yeah, I'm actually really enjoying this, I didn't think, I was hoping I wouldn't, because, you know, I don't want to have to get, like, three or four Spawn books, but it's Spawn, and it's really good, um, so King Spawn is a thing. This is his first full appearance. Um, like I said, the return of, of, of uh, Billy Kincaid. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 quite a. Uh, it's so brutal. It's really really brutal. <laughs> Next is uh, X Men number three. This is the cover A. I also have the uh, one in 25 Terry Dodson on the way here, too, because I love Terry and Rachel Dodson's artwork. So I definitely got that color uh, cover, too. Um, but this is number three, the A cover. Um, and this, this is a pretty cool moment where, you know, um, Polaris screams, X-Men don't talk. They throw hands, and, and, and she just goes swinging on, on people. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'm kind of liking the first two issues. It was X-Men being the X-Men. They would 
help humans out and we're all in this together but now there's this underlying we're better than you and, and this that and the other and it, it it's just eh we'll see it's Jerry Duggan um I usually like things that he writes so give it the benefit of the doubt first two issues were great this one wasn't bad this one had great action in it incredible artwork the stories just I'm, I'm just wanting to see where this story's gonna go before it I can tell if this is like good or bad like you know um it was just kind of an issue where they fought you know and they said slogany things that you would say um and 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 that's pretty much it that's like you know so yeah uh batman 113 this is the cardstock variant cover really awesome glare you get the point um molina I think it's a Molina cardstock variant. Um, yeah, Batman's actually starting to turn up pretty good. Like, um, was it this issue? Was it this issue or the last one? Because I got one twelve too. It was back ordered. Just want to make sure. Okay, yeah, this is part two of Fear State. I'm telling you what, the artwork, Jorge Jimenez artwork is absolutely awesome to me. Loving the Batman. The art is definitely on point. He's he's very Jim Lee-ish to me. It, I can definitely see he's got to have, be influenced by Jim Lee. That has to be like one of his top top three. Or at least that's the way it looks to me. There was another page, I think, in here. It was really incredible. Man, you got stuff like that. Look at that. That is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, okay. So it wasn't the last issue. He was infected by this uh, this stuff, the fear state gas. Um, so now he's out of it. He's okay. He's back in contact with his peoples. Now he's got to go after Scarecrow. I remember 112 way better than what I did read 112 sooner. I read this like as soon as my stuff came in. And then there's a little backstory for Cloud Hunter. So To be honest, what little I've read of Detective, I'm liking Detective more than I am Batman right now. But it's not bad. The artwork's incredible. The story's not bad. It's Tinian. Tinian can't write a bad story. He might he might write something that's slow that maybe shouldn't be slow, but he's going to do it anyway, and it's going to be good, or decent at least. Yeah, Rude. I really, I really, I need to ask him on, like, Instagram and just be like, are you really like, was Jim Lee a big influence on you? Cause it really looks like it. Um, let's see. Yeah. Very, very nice. Good morning. Six face, uh, six face comics. Oh my God. It's too early for all that interior artwork. I'm telling you, man, he, he fires on all cylinders. I'm going to miss the artist on this book. And when the team leaves, um, have I seen new? I think I've seen solicitations for the new team. It's not bad. Uh, next is Trial of Magneto number two. This is the D variant, or C variant, it might be B. Definitely a variant. It's the uh, was it Chevron variant? I think that is. Phenomenal. I'm going to have to do a video on Atomic Empire and just show how simple it is. You can just pick out covers. Um, I, if it's 
cover price, I usually will grab just whatever I think is the best one. Um, so I really don't think it's Magneto that did it now. Um, the ending has me like, what on this book? Something's up. I don't know. He's not acting very Magneto-ish. Something's up, and I, I can't wait to figure out what it is. We're about halfway through the five-part miniseries. Next issue, probably some kind of big reveal. Uh, the end of this was a pretty big reveal. I'm actually enjoying this. This is actually really, really fun. Um, this is an example of when I get an event, and it's not actually that bad, or it's actually good entertainment. So, yeah. Next up is Joker number seven. Now, this is a Tinian book that I absolutely love, even though he's not really even in this issue. It's called Joker. They should have called this book Joker and Gordon or, or Gordon and Joker or the Joker and Gordon show or something, something like that, because this whole issue is pretty much with George, uh, Gordon. Gordon is, you know, got arrested in the last issue. Now he's being interrogated. Guess how that's going? Because guess what he does for a living? So he knows all these tricks, ends up being a date because he's James Gordon. Um, the mustache. It's the mustache. Women women find it irresistible. Um, the man's very confident, too. But, yeah, he goes on a date, and then at the end of the date, there is <coughs> a big reveal. So, Or a, a someone shows up. And we will see what happens in the next issue. Um, the artwork's incredible. I love Gillian March. March's artwork. Example on the cover. <coughs> wow. Well, you need to catch up. Um, the artwork alone is fantastic. I love Jorge's artwork. Phenomenal. Um, the story is a slow read. It's a slow burn. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I think it's cool. I just wish this actually happened in this issue. You're going to give me cool covers like that. All right, have a good one, Sean. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I think you're doing probably something food-related next. Next up, wow, from Scout Comics, Mullet Cop number one. I think this is a one shot. Um, this is a really, really, this is a heavy comic. This thing's huge. Um, I think I ended up getting this for it's seven ninety nine. I probably ended up getting it for five ninety nine or four. I think probably four ninety nine. Really great artwork. I love this. This is Paul Blart meets Eastbound and Down meets kind of uh, 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 I want to say like zombie but not like it, it, something really gory oh my god this book's so fun so hilarious um, I was I was laughing so hard reading this book I really enjoyed this I hope this is like is this like are they going to make this ongoing or is this just a one shot I'm just happy I bought it and read it and I own it. Um, I didn't think a whole lot of people were going to be on it, but there's actually a lot of people in their pools that I've seen that's pulled this book, and everybody says they they've enjoyed it. So this was yeah, this was a, out of the park for me right here. Um, it's just really fun to read. Um, a lot of bang for your buck. I know it's seven ninety nine price tag, but this thing weighs a ton. This is a whole lot of book, a whole lot of pages. Um, I would rec I hope they're making this an ongoing thing, or at least a mini, like not just a one shot. That was incredible, so so good. It it really is. I, I'm I'm telling you it. Good morning, Mars Comics. Um, let's see. I picked up this. I was late on this and don't know why. I didn't know this was going to be a thing. I got issue one of Army of Darkness. Now my pull. Issue two is going to be coming out soon. 
Um, yeah, this is the one and eleven FOC blood red Sager variant. That's the N variant. I just went on there and was like, oh crap, I need this. I would have been happy with any cover I could get my hands on for as back issues that had already come out. This was available. It was available at cover price, the one and eleven. So I was like, cool, looks great. I'll grab it. And um, yeah, so Ash tried to get a job, go back to life as normal, gets a job as a lumberjack, because of course, chainsaw. The portal shows up, sucks him in. Now he's uh, back in time. Back in time. I want to say he went back in time, but I don't think he went back in time to, it's not like, Army of uh, Army of Darkness. I don't think. Let me look. Just want to be sure. The artwork's really, really good. It totally is really, really fun. Uh, no, seventies. That's right. He goes back to nineteen seventy nine. That's right because of the title. Duh, Tylox, moron. Um, yeah, South Bronx. Uh, during the whole like warriors thing and the Necronomicon is in the hands of a group called the Warlocks, wouldn't you know? And they are exploding people with the Necronomicon and Ash is caught in the middle of it. Uh, as soon as he gets there, he is attacked by another gang who thinks that they are the Warlock. He's part of the Warlocks because he portaled in. But Sue's great action. Great artwork, Army of Darkness. Love it, love it, love it. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. Have been since I was a teenager. I think I was like, no, nah, I think I was like 10 when I saw the first Evil Dead. I think. I think it was like late, late at night on Halloween or like TBS or something like that. So I think it was heavily, heavily edited. Eastbound and Down was so good. Oh, yeah? Well, that's Spoon Man. <laughs> play it. Play it by, play it by a nine-year-old birthday party. Did you ever have Spoon Man play at your birthday party when you was a kid? No, I didn't. That's right, Spoon Man. Got from the Soundgarden video. Spoon Man. Oh, my God. Love Eastbound and Down. Oh, so good. Okay. Um, next is Batman 112. This is the one where he's infected by the stuff. And his mind starts going crazy. Um, he's starting to lose his mind in this issue. Um, he is terrified that he's not going to make it. Keeps trying to talk himself through it. This is an incredible issue of Batman. Um, this blew my mind. So that's what I'm saying. Tinian, like for me, I, I don't enjoy everything he's putting out. Because you, you're not going to like everything that somebody writes. It's not going to happen. But I'm reading this Joker. It's good. His Batman has great issues in it, um, even though not every issue is incredible. Some of it's set up. I mean, that happens. Um, what else am I getting? Something is killing the children. I'm loving it. Um, nice house on the lake I'm going to get as like a hardcover or trade. Eh, we'll, I'll get it then and see how it goes. Um, I just want to see how it ends, but... And there's like a few more, I think, that he's doing. There's one more at least. I can't remember. Um, he's doing so much stuff. Um, oh my God. Uh, next is, let's see, this is top three. So this is number three. Is of course Nightwing. And of course, I got the cardstock J. Scott Campbell variant because J. Scott Campbell is one of my favorite artists. And all the next cover, the next like three or four issues are, they all have cover B, J. Scott Campbell, Cardstock, various, those are the ones that I'm getting. I really, as far as art goes, I'm not an artist. I don't know what, I, I don't know technically what's good or bad. I just know what appeals to my eye. But J. Scott Campbell definitely draws in a way that definitely appeals to my eye. It's probably, Jim Lee, I don't know who number two would be. 
Uh, there, there'd have to be a shootout. J. Scott Campbell would be up there. He'd definitely be in the top five. He'd probably be number three. Um, let's see. So he's enacted his plan to fix Bloodhaven with Alfred's money. Now he's got to make it happen. And I'm blanking on what happened. See, this is why I do these. This is why I do these kind of little video things. Because I always they use the resealable bags. I hate using tape. I have painter's tape, but I'm going to run out of this clear stuff first. I don't waste anything. First off, the interior art, Bruno, Bruno Redondo. Let's see if I can find Everybody always does like a splash or like a thing. Aha. And, uh, oh, this, I don't remember what issue this is. Okay, this is Nightwing goes to Gotham. He goes to talk to Batman. He figures he needs to talk to Batman after... Announcing what he announced, everybody else knew about it. He didn't even ask Bruce his opinion because he said Bruce probably said it was a stupid idea. No, Bruce, um, brooding Batman, grr. So he goes to Gotham. Uh, he's in uh, the alley where all the bad things in the Bat family have happened. Um, he gets attacked. He gets a little overwhelmed. The Bat shows up. And in a huge, huge moment, Batman says something that is actually really, really heartwarming and really sweet. And it shocks Dick Grayson to his core. He said, you know, he said, um, I, I think I had it back there. He said, but thanks for jumping in and helping. And uh, Batman said, I lost my parents in that alley. I'm not going to lose my son to, to uh, my son to it, too. And then he like off and dick's like whoa he just gave me he just called me his son out of never giving me a compliment com constantly pick, you know nitpicking everything that i do driving me insane he says something really 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 sweet so it, it, i thought it was a fun great story now i think he's got to go back back to bloodhaven and actually make make this thing happen i mean it's a great idea um there needs to be more people in the world like dick grayson but I mean, it, it, if you had a whole bunch of money, how much would you just give away? I mean, I know what we'd all say until you get the money in your bank account. And the next thing you know, you're, you're doing you comic book haul videos from your yacht in Bermuda or in, or in the Mediterranean. <laughs> you know, all your videos are like vintage Batman and super rad and just rare, hard to find stuff. Uh, number two is Moon Knight. It says that it's the first appearance of Hunter's Moon, but I could have sworn in issue one, you saw him in costume. Maybe in the shadows he was, um, but you saw him. He talked, he spoke. I think he even said his name. So I don't know. Now, now we're having a shootout for the first Paris Hunter movie. It's either this or one. So, I don't know. Um, I've been enjoying this, though. Uh, uh, issue one was vampires and him showing up, I thought. <laughs> um, issue two was him sending someone to mentally screw with Moon Knight which backfired horribly for him because you don't want to get in Moon Knight's mind. Um, and then this issue is them actually meeting and fighting. Um, Moon Knight not backing down, not not losing, um, actually winning. Did he win? I don't know. I don't – I think he won, but he didn't. Like, it was like a stalemate. I think they, they did a time limit, a time limit draw. They did a Broadway. 
Um, they both went time limit. Now it's out for decision. We're waiting on the judges to come back in on the fight. <laughs> I'm thinking this is incredible. Um, Capuccio, I, I was a fan of him on Spidey. I think Giuseppe. Fan of, of his Spidey work. Fan, a fan of the interiors in here. Um, the cover, Steve McNiven. I love Steve McNiven. And Jay Lee worked on this cover. Let's see if we can see this. This is a cheap camera, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. I've been loving this. This is number two. And last, definitely not least, my favorite book for this two weeks is Norse Mythology, number four. It's the B cover, David Mack. Of course, I got the one with a giant cat on it. Um, this actually does happen in this issue, except not quite. But these have been phenomenal. I think they said this is only going to go for a little while, and it'll be like a little mini six, eight, 10, 12 issue mini, and then it'll stop. This is volume two. I need to get volume one. I need to find it. Um, I'm loving Neil Gaiman's writing. These stories are really fun. They're really incredible. They're hilarious. Um, this one is how the tides came to be a thing. How, like, you know, little legend things like that. Um, I know what I'm just, how the tide came to be a thing. I know uh, one of them is how it's it's little legends about how things happen. But yeah, it's great. Uh, Loki's in this. Uh, him and Thor are going adventuring. They have upon their adventure, this kid owed them a debt. So he was like, I will just come adventure with you and help you. And they're like, what can you do? You're not even a god, you're mortal. And he's like, I'm really fast. And they're like, oh, okay. But he is really fast. To be a mortal, he's really, really fast. Like, in this thing, I think he raced the wind or something like that. Um, yeah, Thor wrestles old age. Yeah. I'm telling you, Norse mythology. That is, that is it. That is uh, every time this book comes out, it's either this or Nightwing. That's the number one. Uh, there was that one time the Flash was the number one. That was kind of an oddball out. Moon Knight's been a number one. Yeah, that's it for this two weeks. Let's get down here in the chat, talk to some people real quick. Let's see. J. Scott Campbell, love his style, especially his ladies. And it's weird because his styles vary. Like his style from drawing a superhero is like 100% different than the way the style he uses to draw women. Like, this is what I love about J. Scott Campbell. You see all the defin this definition, like all the muscles, all the shading for the muscles. That is ridiculous. Like it's, it's very realistic. It's not overdone. It's just, but it, it, it's those amount of details, that shading to get that muscle to look like that. I, I love that stuff. His attention to detail. This is very, I think he draws women very round and very, you know, a very, um, oh God, I don't know styles of drawing. So it's really hard to describe, but there are like two different ways that he draws. And it just depends on, I guess, what gender he's drawing. Like women are very curvy and very, very feminine, very soft looking, even though they could be black cat or, you know, but even if he drew black cat, she would still have like, like, you know, leg, all the shading with the leg muscles and stuff like that. Like it would be all these little definitive little pieces, but it would be also more round. I don't know. I I can't describe art because I don't know Jack about it. I just know what I like. Moon Knight is, is very incredible. Nah, he won. Which one? I think Moon Knight did win. Of course Moon Knight would win. 
I'm loving how they're throwing all kinds of stuff at Moon Knight. And he's just like, I'm, I look, I know how to handle all this. Like, this is nothing new. You guys act like I'm a rookie. I know what I'm doing. I know how to do my job. Don't tell me how to do my job. Just let me do it. So, yeah, that's it. Um, once again, check out the Batman Hush community tag. Uh, Sean's is out now. Some comics and more. Uh, I'll try to link all this stuff in the description. Um, Comic Boo did one a couple days ago for the first one. And two days from now is Attention Seeking Geek. I'm going to link all the people in the descriptions. Uh, the old videos are also in a playlist. Um, next, I don't know. I'm just going to make some content. You know, I might do a collection vid. Uh, I need to do a type of collector vid because those seem to do really well. Uh, appreciate everybody for watching my content, um, chatting with me, being involved, doing things. Uh, that's incredible. Um, if you would like to later, just let me know. I've always got stuff in the work that involves other people. I don't mind working with other people and doing other things. Just reach out to me. Let me know. Um, check me out on Instagram. Like, subscribe, follow, do all those things. Um, keep reading. Keep collecting. I'm going to file away all these books. And have a great rest of everybody's weekend.